Good. There we go. Good morning. Woo. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God.
Stand. <clears throat> Let us worship God. We have seen a star in the east. We have heard the songs of angels. Now we follow the light into the world. God is with us. Christ has come. The Lord be with you. Arise, shine, for the light of the world has come. Darkness covers the earth and its people, but the radiance of God's light burns away its shadows, illuminates the smallest corner, and heralds in the start of a new dawn, where hearts no longer fear, souls might be set free, and sisters shall follow brother, nation shall follow nation, and kings and princes bow down in all for the one who comes to reign. Arise, shine, for the light of the world has come. Alleluia.
God judges the nations with righteousness and answers the poor with justice. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. God of grace, you have given us Jesus, the light of the world, but we choose darkness and cling to sins that hide the brightness of your love. Immersed in ourselves, we have not risen to new life. Baptize us with your spirit that, forgiven and renewed, we may preach your word to the nations and tell of your glory shining in the face of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our light forever. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting unto everlasting. We remember that God has said in the Psalms that as far as heaven is above the earth, as far as east is from the west, so far will God remove our transgressions from us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As we've been forgiven in Christ, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. This first Sunday of the new year, we welcome you, are glad that you're here, and invite you to take the friendship pad and fill that out and pass it down the row and back that you might notice those sitting around you and greet one another by name at close of worship. If you're interested in learning more about the ministry or mission of Westminster or how you might become a member, at close of worship, I'd invite you to enter the parlor through these doors and just around to your left, there'll be someone at a welcome center who can answer that. New member classes have just begun this Sunday, and that's a way you can learn more about the church. Let them know if you want to be part of that. Um, would remind you also that this coming Wednesday, we start our midweek uh, dinners, and if you want to make a reservation on the pew pad, please do that or call the office. Also, our Westminster Academy program will be starting back on Wednesday nights. Next Saturday, I'll be leading a group to Memphis for a tour of the National Civil Rights Museum. We have a few spots left on the bus. If you're interested, please see me after worship. 
and we'll make sure that there's a spot for you. I um, want to invite two of our collegians, um, Reynolds Spencer and Ben Griffith, to uh, talk about coming back from the collegiate conference at Montreat. Uh, good morning, y'all. Um, so the past uh, three days, uh, a group of seven uh, collegiate kids, Reynolds and I, Leah, my sister, uh, Callie, Reynolds' sister, uh, Kirsten Fox, uh, Mackenzie Miller, and then um, another youth outside of the church. Um, we all went under the leadership of Rachel Penmore and Whitney Booth to Montreat for the college conference this year. And uh, so the theme of the conference was a uh, compassionate community. Um, and so there are a couple keynote speakers uh, that, that gave, us, gave us insightful talks of how we can make our communities more compassionate. Um, so on the first day, really, we talked about um, how to be a more compassionate amongst our interfaith community. And the keynote speaker was a uh, scholar, Ibu uh, Patel, who is actually a Muslim man, but um, he has done, made great inroads um, um, in interfaith work, has founded a large interfaith organization, um, served under the Obama administration on an interfaith committee. Um, so, uh, and he really talked about how like interfaith work can make progress in communities, uh, giving examples of like the civil rights movement. Uh, both the Jews, the Jews worked with Christians to help support the civil rights movement and Gandhi's movement. There are different religions in India um, that moved forward together. And really um, it made uh, me reflect on like how we can be, um, uh, extend our arms to um, both those outside of the Christian faith and those other denominations within our own faith. Um, and it was very impactful. Yeah, so the second keynote the next day was kind of continuing with the uh, compassionate community theme was a group of inmates from a nearby women's prison and these two chaplains from that prison. And it was just a beautiful display of kind of the unifying power of Christ that kind of allows us to have com compassion for our people in different situations with different upbringings and people who've, you know, made some mistakes in their lives. And so um, that was an incredible thing to have and there was a group of them who came up and sang as a choir and sang with us um, there was a couple who kind of gave their testimonies and um, kind of how they came to know Christ and the two chaplains kind of gave their own spiel too and it was it was just an incredible um, opportunity I think for all of us and I would recommend if there's any college students who are here today or any soon to be college students I would recommend going next year it's a kind of great reset as you enter into the new semester. Um, but yeah, thank you all. Thank you both. Reynolds is a junior at Ole Miss and Ben is a junior at Rhodes College. We are grateful for your witness. Uh, news also, uh, one of our members, Richard Cummins, uh, died and uh, on Tuesday, we'll have a visitation here in the parlor from three to five and then there'll be a private internment. We remember with gratitude his life. Come, let us continue our worship.
The Lord be with you. Holy One, giver of all light, lift up our hearts and minds to Christ, the morning star that never fades. By the light of your Holy Spirit, reveal to us your saving word and lead us to offer our lives to you in service and in love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first text comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 60th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Hear the word of God. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and God's glory will appear over you. Nations shall come into your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away. Your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you and young camels from Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come, and they shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel text is from the Gospel of Matthew, and I suspect that Matthew is drawing some criticism from the Homeowners Association because he hasn't taken down his decorations yet. He still has the star shining over the neighborhood. The camels and the magi are out on the front lawn. Still has the Christ child. I know, we've moved on. We've taken our decorations and packed them up into Rubbermaid containers. We've taken all the bottles from that January 1st celebration down to the recycling center. But there is another calendar that says that the 12 days of Christmas are just wrapping up on this day of Epiphany. Epiphany, it means manifestation, revelation. The moment the light comes on and it dawns on us that we have seen the Lord. Come now, listen to the one who still hasn't put away the Christ child, Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. Hear the word of God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is a shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. And opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Well, that's just the way it is when you have an epiphany. God messes with your GPS system, and you have to find another road. The Magi are just repeating what has been repeated throughout Scripture. In Epiphany, God messes with your GPS system. Remember Abram? Minding his own business, and then suddenly, in Epiphany, God says, from now on, you no longer will be called Abram, but Abraham, and your Sarai, your wife, will be called Sarah, and you will have children as many as the stars in the sky and as many as the grains of sand on the seashore. Wow! He didn't ask for that, wasn't pursuing it, it just dawned on him. And suddenly he's on another road, having to go down to the courthouse to get his name changed, having to go back home because he forgot to bring two forms of ID. <laughs> when you're over 100 years old and just now attending your first PTA conference, that's a different road. <laughs> Epiphany. It's what happens. Remember the murderer Moses? He stepped off the trail just to see, just to see the burning bush, just to see it. And when he saw it, he felt the ground under his feet changed and it became holy ground. And he got on a different road filled with pharaoh and fly and frogs. 
the seas splitting and wandering around the desert for 40 years listening to complaining people all the time, living on a promise, an epiphany. The prostitute named Rahab had an epiphany and hides some spies in her Jericho home risking life and limb so that the walls of Jericho might come a-tumbling down. Mary has an epiphany. Joseph has an epiphany. Nobody goes out looking for one. They just happen. Those magi, they were not looking for an epiphany. They were looking for the one born king of the Jews. They had followed the star all the way to Jerusalem, and then they stopped and started asking directions. Not from a star, but asking people in the know. Where is the king of the Jews? Where is the one born king of the Jews? Well, the people in the know didn't know. Isn't it awful when people who proclaim that they have faith don't know their own faith? Isn't it awful when they don't have eyes to see that the ages have shifted? What if they came to us? Where is the one born king of the Jews? What would our answer be? Have you got one? Where would you point? If someone was looking for the one born king of the Jews, where would you point? Do we play dumb? I don't know. All that not knowing bubbled up to the ear of the king. And even the king didn't know where to find a king. And so he consulted his best and his brightest. And he asked him, where, where do you find the king of the Jews? And they said, Bethlehem, it's in your Bible, come on. had to be a strange conversation to talk to a king about a king. No one who craves power looks forward to the time when they're not in power. No one says, I can't wait until my kids grow up and take away my car keys. We like to hold on to our power. Herod's no different. Where is this one born king of the Jews? Herod became frightened. Now get this. And all of Jerusalem with him. It's what happens. Light comes into the world, and a lot of folks, they run for the shadows. They just love to travel the well-worn ruts, the ruts, the ruts, the ruts of fear over and over and over again. I know to go, where to go when I'm afraid, don't you? I know it. I turn all the security lights on. I lock my doors. Everyone in Jerusalem they pulled up their welcome mats because they were afraid. They chose to follow Herod. Herod, Herod, crazy Herod. You know he was crazy. You know Herod had his wife killed. He got more wives. He had his wife killed. He had his own, some of his own children killed. He had many of his relatives killed. In fact, Emperor Augustus said of Her Herod, Emperor Augustus said, I'd rather be Herod's pig than Herod's son. Even the emperor knew the king was crazy. Crazy. 
crazy leadership. And yet people will follow the leader. Herod was afraid, and all of Jerusalem with him. Herod summoned those foreigners. He didn't show his cards. He said, go to Bethlehem and search diligently for that child, and when you find him, why don't you come back and let me know so I can pay him homage? And those wise men, they followed that crazy king's orders. They searched diligently and found that child and they brought gifts of gold and frankincense. It's like they were fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah, the passage that Guy just read to you. Caravans will come, bringing gold and frankincense. What do you suppose? Symbols, I guess, right? Gold for a king. Frankincense, the aroma that pleases the heavens. But Isaiah does not mention myrrh. Why did they bring myrrh? What's myrrh about? Myrrh is an ointment used for embalming. Why would anyone give a child embalming? Embalming ointment. Maybe they had an epiphany. Maybe they had an epiphany. Maybe when they saw that child that came over them, some spirit came over them, that this child was the light of the world, and when the light of the world enters the world, people will look for a way to snuff it out. Those wise men, they went to bed that night, and they had a dream that Herod was off his hinges. There comes a time when the light dawns on you. Do you follow the directions of the king or do you follow the directions of the king of kings? They went home by another way. They followed the dreams of God. Do you know what the dreams of God are? If I were to make a guess, I would say that the dreams of God are this, that you are the light of the world. You. That you all are the light of the world. And you do not hide that light. And that light is not afraid. That light speaks to the darkness. And everyone sees it. What are the dreams of God? If I had a guess, I would say the dreams of God are that the nations, the nations, all the nations, will come to the throne. All the nations will come to the throne. And he'll say to some, the throne will say to some, Come into the kingdom. Come. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was in prison, and you visited me. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. And those some, they were surprised. What? When did we see you hungry, thirsty, naked, in prison? When when were you a stranger? And the, the one on the throne, the voice will say, as you did it unto the least of these, you did it unto me. And it's like they had an epiphany. Come. Come into the kingdom. The light dawns on them. Oh, oh, that's what life's about. Have you ever had an epiphany? Come. 
have an epiphany. God is here. Travel this different road. Travel this hard road. Travel this road to the cross. Take it into your soul. Let the light shine on you. Let the light shine through you. Come. Let's travel this road together. Let us stand and confess our faith with the Nicene Creed it's on page 34 of your hymnal. Let us confess the faith of the universal church. We believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human, for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Be seated, please. With gratitude to God for all the blessings which we have been given, let us with joy and thanksgiving return a portion of our life and labor as the ushers wait on us for our tithes and offerings. Sons of the Lord, God of our darkness and made us. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says our Lord. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and eat with them, and they with me. Friends, this is a gracious invitation of our Lord and Savior who invites us to this table. It's not a Presbyterian table only, but all those who love and want to follow the Lord are welcome to come and be nurtured here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, almighty creator of heaven and earth, with joy we praise you and give thanks to your name. In sending us your son, Jesus, to be born of Mary, your word became flesh, and we have seen a new and radiant vision of your glory. His name is above every name, the Prince of Peace and Savior of all. In him we have been brought out of darkness into your marvelous light. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Your ways are just and true. Therefore, we lift our hearts in joyful praise, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. you most holy God for sending your only son to live among us sharing our joy and sorrow he told your story healed the sick and was a friend of sinners obeying you he took up his cross and died that we might live we praise you that he overcame death and has risen to rule the world he is still the friend of sinners we trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us and believe that when he comes in glory we will celebrate victory with him Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break this bread and share the one cup, giving thanks for the saving love in Jesus Christ. As you raise our Lord from death and call us with him from death to life, we give ourselves to you to live for him in joy and grateful praise. Great is the mystery of faith. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Eternal God, everything speaks to us of light, of revelation, of truth made manifest, and understanding and illumined. The music of Christmas gospel still lingers in the air, the light the shines in the darkness has come to us and to all people. A season of epiphany opens our minds to the significance of the Christ child for the world. And so, in spite of the darkness around us and within us, we come with grateful hearts at the beginning of a new year to the table of Christ, here to take our spiritual bearings, to strengthen our faith, to orient our lives, to sustain our souls. Where else could we begin, O oh God? We are grateful for glimpses of truth, for flashes of light, for pivotal events, for bits of wisdom that come to us from various disciplines, fields of study, life experiences, world religions, broadening relationships. All of these enrich us and help us to live life at a deeper level. But none of these is able, we confess, to withstand the darkness of life more than occasionally or in part. In none of these do you come to dwell in person among us. Only in Jesus Christ do you meet us in the fullness of your life with us and for us. Only he is God incarnate, the light in which all lights are illumined. 
Only his life, death, and resurrection constitute the event in light of which all other events are given meaning. So as we hear the words of institution, as we eat this bread and drink this cup, help us to become more aware of just what happened to us and to this world in Jesus Christ. Help our minds and hearts to be seized anew by what you have declared, disclosed, demonstrated in Christ about your relationship with us and ours with the world. And, O oh God, because we begin this year in communion with Christ, make us eager to live out this good news. Make us more willing for it to direct our treatment of others. Make us more open and generous and gracious in our approach to the world. Send us out in the power of the Spirit to live for others as Christ lived for us, announcing that his death for the sins of the world and telling his resurrection to all people and nations. By your Spirit, draw us together into one body and join us to Christ the Lord, that we may remain his glad and faithful people until we feast with him in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink, all of you, of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again in glory. Friends, these are the gifts of God for God's people. Draw near with praise and thanksgiving.
Lord be with you. O God of majesty and light, you hold the world in your hands. Thank you for your great revelation. May your spirit may peace descend upon us, and make us useful in your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> As your light has come, go forth now and shine the light of God on all people. Go, knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with us all, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.